Hello there, internets. Something interesting has happened in the last couple of days, and it's been a while since I've done a video. I'll do a Life, the Universe, and everything update here first week of January. But for now, Falcon BMS folks have released version 4.37, and this version solves many of the key problems a lot of people had with BMS and wanting to give it a go over, say, DCS uh, that kept many people away. Uh, away. To me, the biggest factor is they integrated the alternative launcher as now the default launcher for 4.37. This allows you to bind all of your axes, and it auto-detected everything but my rudder pedals, and my rudder pedals were easy enough. I just clicked assigned, I moved them, and it detected it. Look, I'll just clear, move my rudder pedals, it detects them. Same thing with the tow brakes. You can do all of your key mapping. Now, there is one downside. If you get into the middle of a mission and realize, oh crap, I need to bind this control. Well, you can't do that from within the simulation. You've got to back all the way out of the mission, close the game, come back to the launcher, change it here, relaunch the game. Is it a perfect ideal solution? No. Is it significantly better and should eliminate one of the largest barrier of entries and that was getting your freaking controls to work in BMS, absolutely. The other major feature that a lot of people have been looking for, especially the pilots in VR, is the support for VR. It is here. It is an initial implementation. I'm not going to say it is perfect, but it is certainly usable, and the performance in the sim is one of the best when it comes to VR, period. And that's for a couple of different factors. There are a couple of downsides, and I'll talk about those here in a couple of minutes. There are some people that are reporting problems with anything that isn't like a supported by Steam VR, the Oculus Rift, and getting it to work. There's some people that will help you through that. But if you have a Rift, a Vive, or a Reverb, it seems to work just about, so long as you got everything set up in Steam VR, it seems to work just fine. So those are a couple of the major things. Now there are a couple more under the hood that are really, really big deals going forward that isn't super sexy. One is the decoupling of avionics from flight mechanics. And this means that now full fidelity aircraft other than the F-16 are a possibility. The first one that is being released is a work in progress full fidelity F-15C with F-15C avionics as best as they can model them given some limitations on, you know, state secrets. That is absolutely a game changer. Expect the community to, going forward, include other aircraft, including several that are probably popular with the DCS crowd, being included into the Falcon BMS. And I think at this point, it's time to drop the Falcon and just start calling it Benchmark Sims and BMS, because once you start adding in those other aircraft, you have a range of possibilities. Helicopters aren't there yet, so rotorcraft, rotoheads, I don't know if or when that's going to happen. But something else to mention is that BMS is free-ish. You need to have a copy of Falcon 4. Now, I have it on CD-ROM from 1998 if you need to get a copy. It's currently on sale on Steam for $4.19 or $4.99 for the entire Falcon collection. You can also go to GOG, get the entire uh, collection for $4.99 as well. And then you go to falcon-bms.com, click download now, download the installer, and let it do its thing. It's about 15 gigs installed. I think the download itself is about 2 to 4 gigs. So, you also have different theaters that you can get. Now, these are separate downloads. It comes with default Korea. This is basically single-player, multiplayer, and you can change that from within the mission. Now, I'm not sure what has been updated for 4.37 uh, yet. I believe Balkans, but the other campaigns that should be coming around in theaters of operation are the Balkans, Kola Peninsula, Volga Gap, or Central Europe, basically, Sinai, Persian Gulf. I think there's one more out there, or one or two more. I don't know how actively they're maintained. But there are multiple theaters of operations, and no, they're at no additional charge. Again, keep in mind that this is done by a team of dedicated volunteers over the past 24 years 
you do have to have a copy of Falcon 4 for copyright reasons, but they put their own personal time, effort, and tears, and sweats, and all of that good stuff for no monetary compensation. I give them a lot more leeway than I do people who are charging $80 for a cockpit that isn't finished for three or four years. Or five. Just saying. And the fact that they have multi-core, multi-threaded, or multi-threaded and multi-core support now in this release. Now, is everything fully multi-core yet and multi-threaded application? No, but they're getting there. They've got the basics there, and they will continue to expand that. That being said, performance has been absolutely phenomenal. I've gotten no less than 100 frames per second in 2D, and I've gotten, as far as I can tell, 90 frames per second with my Oculus Rift CV1. A couple of more things that they have done is they've redesigned some of the menus. They made them a little bit easier to... Uh, navigate in my opinion but if there are some downsides which there are I'll talk about those here one is the weather graphics are subpar for 2022 2023 no volumetric crowd clouds they're sprite clouds the terrain looks straight out of flight simulator 2002 you know late 90s early 2000s because it largely is Ground units, air units, ships, and things like that can be anywhere from somewhat decent low polygon models to just, well, potato quality. I mean, I think the example I like to use here is the MD-500. That is an absolutely potato quality, mo uh, not module, but uh, model. However, the flip side to that is you can have hundreds of units on the battlefield and still have excellent performance. And you can tell generally what, you know, the difference is between a Centurion tank, let's say here, you know, you can tell the difference between a Centurion, a K2, and a T-55, at least in your FLIR pod, you know, versus a T-72, etc. So generally speaking, you can tell and identify ground units the other thing to me that is absolutely amazing about bms is basically you can simulate any time period from about 1960 to 2020 you want aircraft we got aircraft fighters f4s we got ja37 vigans you know su-15s mb339 I think I would have put them under attack, but, you know, that's just me. But various different models, the F-15A, the F-15C, no EXs yet. I'm sure that'll probably be coming in an update, but F-22, I think J-20, yep, J-20. Multi-role aircraft, Hornets, Super Hornets, Raphael, Su-30, Su-35, Su-37, Every block of F-16 you can possibly imagine. Uh, mud hens and various different iterations of the mud hens. You know, different engines. F-14 Delta. Eurofire Typhoon. Attack aircraft. You know, various A-4s, A-6s, A-7. You know, J -A or AJ-37, the ground attack variant of the Vigan, uh, the one that we have in DCS, for instance. You know, F-111. I, I know this will make some Aussies very happy with uh, being able to see F-111s. And various bombers. You know, helicopters, again, nothing's flyable, but they do have a good uh, selection of helicopters available. Command and control and electronic intelligence. Uh, here we are. We have prowlers and growlers. EF 111s. Rivet joint for intelligence gathering. J stars for intelligence gathering. RFC phantoms. Tornado. SR 71. U 2. 
and in the dynamic campaign, you actually have to fly reconnaissance flights on a regular, uh, fairly regular basis in order to figure out where enemy units and things like that are. And then we have support aircraft like the AN-2, AN-24, AN-124, C-17, C-5, C-4-141. It's all here. Basically anything from 1960 to 2020 can be simulated. There are a couple of interesting things I've noticed that are missing. Like there's no regular TU-22, just the M, so no vodka bomber. But for the most part, same thing when it comes to ships. You know, they do have a good selection of carriers, carrier types, although I think it's all the same model. Kinetsoft, Wasp, LHD. But some of these ships, I'll tell you, are just potato, absolutely potato quality. You know, the, the Arley Burke looks pretty good. It has a few more polygons. But the uh, Kid Class, uh, that's as basic bare bones as you get when it comes to ship models. So you are sacrificing some stuff there. Uh, you can hear their what their radar chirp sounds like. But they have a large number of cargo ships, oil tankers. Again, potato quality, yes, arguably. But the flip side is excellent performance in VR, and even on moderate spec computers, still able to run it, uh, run this at significant frame rates. And of course, let's talk about the. Yes, the video is still potato quality, but you have different campaigns. Like this one, it has, I guess, a max of five days. You can uh, consolidate and uh, basically play the dynamic campaign. So they bring you up to speed of where everything is. And then you get your missions. And again, this is like being a... F Falcon simulates being a fighter pilot. DCS or Digital Cockpit Simulator simulates the aircraft. Although I think that line's going to start blurring. You have things like data cartridges that you need to set up. Loadout and quantities, what you have, what you don't have available. All right, listen up. Proper... Uh, mission overview and you can print this I don't know if I actually have my printer set up or not right now if I hear the dog barking then the answer is yes unfortunately the printer is on the top floor of our house and I'm in the basement I will be adding more printers to the house over as time goes on because my dad has the same printer as we do. My in-laws have the same printer as we do. And eventually we're going to end up with both of those. They're all laser printers. At any rate, um, all the comms information, everything just right there that just is nigh bit almost impossible to do in DCS, emergency pr uh, procedures, uh, CSAR, uh, alternate airfields, Sanitize yourself and review evasion plan of action. AKA take a shower before you get out, before you uh, take off. Air tasking order, what everyone is doing, show the entire ATO. Fighter sweeps, Oka strikes, strikes, dead and said, or seed and deed, depending on who, <laughs> depending on what branch of service you're talking with. Command control, ELINT, you know, that actually ELINT flights are a thing. And not only are they ELINT flights, they have, have, have cap.
and then support air-to-air -air refueling, and then they will also have you know, cargo aircraft delivering stuff all the way from Japan over to South Korea to help you know, additional units and stuff like that. Strike. And if I remember correct, you can right click on here and get recon. Oh, well, that's the airbase we're taking off. Let's see here. So this is the depot we're going to be attacking, it looks like. There's an SA-2 battery there. Oh, it looks like they've added some new models since the last time I've flown. So that's an EW and SSR. Okay, so that's a complete helipad, helipad. So that would be our target. Again, this is where you kind of get into that. The terrain is definitely uh, lacking. Right by that depot, we're talking about. Uh, hey, look, we've we've found some uh, SA-14 man pad, Z-23s, radar, trucks, and SA-2. But any rate. That, that's Falcon BMS in a nutshell. Five bucks if you've got everything else when it comes to flight sim stuff. And you can choose, you know, what stage you want to take off from the taxiway. It's going to speed up time. This is a new loading screen. Uh, I think that's much improved. But if you've got five bucks and some time, it's well, if you're looking for the definitive flight simulator Jet, modern jet combat flight simulator. It's well worth your time. All right, with that, I gotta say thanks to the Benchmark Sims team for a fantastic and much surprised release. Till then, see you next time.